Now, I want you to watch the pathological governor bullshit when asked about inertia in regard to police brutality in the state of New York. Now, you want to see a classic psychopath. This guy's not a sociopath. He's a psychopath. He deflects the question by answering a question that wasn't asked. So watch how he redefines the paradigm with his psychobabble. Truth, there's been inertia nationwide. Oh, I must back up one second here. For example, the Choco Bill is not as comprehensive as the state. The state's kind of superseded council in this case. And what do you make of the inertia of the council? I mean, here we are basically six years after Eric Gardner's death, and they're just now moving uh, to do a bill regarding the Choco. Your, your thoughts on that? So six years after uh, Garner was choked out by New York City Police, what was Mr. Garner doing? Selling Lucy cigarettes. And for what purpose would people buy those? They don't have to pay tax. And if you don't know about New York State, a pack of cigarettes is over $10 because of taxes, just in taxes. So this is like inviting this kind of nonsense. So they choked Mr. Garner to death six years later. What's the question? What have you done about it? Why is there such inertia? Word of the day, people, inertia. Now watch how he clings to this like a hungry what Rottweiler to a pork chop. Truth. Truth. There's been inertia nationwide. Inertia nationwide. I was in Los Angeles for the Rodney King situation. So he's qualifying himself that he's known about this now for 30 effing years. Now watch him step in his own dog do by declaring pretty much that he hasn't done anything by what he doesn't say in regard to the question. I was in the federal government. President Clinton sent me to Los Angeles. And Secretary Ron Brown passed away since then. God bless his soul. God bless his soul. For Rodney King. For Rodney King. What's happened since Rodney King? I don't know. What have you done? Since Martin Luther King, Dr. King's death. So you were Attorney General of New York. You were in HUD. You headed up the HUD under Clinton. Right? And you've been governor for six and a half, seven, seven and a half years? And this is your lame response to the question? This guy, governor, do nothing. But boy, does he talk. And God, does he have energy when it comes to stealing tax dollars. But yes, there's been inertia nationwide. Now, in this moment, Zach, I'm less interested in these knee-jerk political responses of the moment. And you see it all across the country. All oh, yeah, let's look over there. Look over here. Look over there. Look over there. This of water yeah, me. look over there. Don't look That's at me. Not the answer either. This is going to be a fundamental rethinking. Oh, yes. Fundamental. This is 30, 40 years. Yes. 30, 40 tactics, years. 30, 40 years. policy that hasn't worked. How many years have the Cuomos been ruling the state of New York? That would be 30, 40 years. But he wants you to look over here, look over there. He brings up a bottle of water. This guy is so good with inanimate object metaphors. Spaghetti and meatballs. You go back 30, 40 years. You see that number of institutionalized people going right up. Militarization of the police going right up. Militarization of the police. This is a guy that has a sort squad to protect him of over 90 troopers at a buck and a half a year minimum. This is a guy that had a major, the highest paid officer in the state, more than colonels, taking his daughter from Mount Kisco to Harvard. You know, and that's not easy because he had to load that car with a glass ceiling. Number of police going right up. You know, you can go back to uh, legislation that was passed in the 90s. This isn't a guy that has anything to do with militarizing the police, right? Go look at New York State's arsenal of weapons. The, the issuance of heavy armored vehicles, okay? And this clown who puts state troopers on trains and has infiltrated the NYP territory of New York, and the NYPD doesn't like it, and they've confronted TA cops in the subways because he wants to make sure as the ruler 
that every mayor in New York City, especially de Blasio, understands that he's the kingpin. I'll put my troopers there because they don't answer to nobody but me. This idiot. This idiot who called a colonel up who became superintendent. And while his superintendency about three years ago, maybe four, there was a big snowstorm on Long Island, and this job, this Cavone called up his superintendent from the LIE, cursing out the superintendent. Why are there no GD effing troopers on the LIE? I'm friends with that superintendent. You know what he said, Governor? We don't patrol the LIE. That's Nassau County Police. Governor Gumbatz didn't apologize to George. No, his arrogance just went on to the next stupid event. Uh, you can go back to the post 9 11. Yes. Uh, where police became not just police, but anti terrorist. Uh, an anti-terrorist force, yes. military equipment, Yes, cetera. yes. This has got to be unpacked. Unpacked. This has got to be thought through. Unpacked. Uh, Go get in front of one of his convoys. You you would think it's Adolf Hitler with the Gestapo and the Leibstandard Brigade. Yeah. If you don't know what the Leibstandard Brigade was, look it up. That's what the state troopers look like when they're ferrying this asshole to whatever disturbance he wants to create this is this is big brother inanity and hypocrisy let me tell you you couldn't circumcise this guy's hypocrisy because there's no end to that prick this what this the state agenda i feel good about because we've been talking about that for years you know i put the attorney general as a special prosecutor five years ago uh so our reforms are smart. Our reforms will be in place statewide. You're right. They're over any uh, local city's actions. Well, let me, tell you, let me tell you about his reforms. I got a friend of mine in the flooring business. He's in his 70s. He retired about a year and a half ago. His son was in his 40s. PTSD. Decent guy, but PTSD. Had a spat with the wife. And in Westchester, New York, did this young man go out into the woods, took a gun, and I think he was going to end his own life. The wife called, and the state police answered. They, ans they answered, okay, they ended the young man's life. That's what they did. They had a sniper take him out. In case he was a threat to anyone else, way deep in the woods, by himself, with a handgun. And this is only three years ago, two, excuse me, two, two, two or three years ago, on this clown's watch. But this has got to be thoughtful and smart and deep. Don't lose the moment and the opportunity of the moment with cursory uh, public relations reforms. I'm not interested in that, right? What that means is he doesn't want to hear about defunding the police because that's his Gestapo. And he doesn't want to hear about anything that may distract from the ever encroaching, ever increasing size of government. I'm going to tell you something, Black America. You better wake up. You better wake up for two reasons. Whether it's the Chinese that take us over or the far left extremists that are parading around with Black Lives Matter acting like they're your chums. When the Bolsheviks took over, the first thing they did was eliminate minorities. You know how I know? I know what words mean. Bolshevik was majority, Menshevik was minority. They killed all the Mensheviks, or 90% of them. The real revolution started in 1917, by the way, was to take out the Tsar's absolute power, restore the, the Duma, which was their new parliament, and create a governance of quasi-democracy. And if you've ever wondered where the word Soviet comes from, that word means council. Okay? So they were basically little assemblies. And they were circles upon circles, and then, of course, you had the Supreme Soviet, the big council. So originally, the concept was for a large government big democracy called communism small c. 
But Lenin and his Bolsheviks didn't want any part of that. So they counter-revolted. And they wiped out all the Mensheviks and all the people who were middle of the road, a lot like you dumb Democrats that think Joe Biden is going to go along with middle of the road. They're going to bump him off so quick. And whoever is his running mate is going to be the president in due time, if not immediately. They are hell-bent on a fascistic form of communism. And they will eliminate the minorities first, because you people are a problem. Black Lives Matter scares them. That's why they get on their knees in front of you. No conservative is going to ever get on their knees. Okay? But I'll tell you what we will do. We'll fight to the death for your freedom, black America. We're the ones who have. We, Republican white folks, are the guys who fought the Civil War to free your posterior anatomy. It wasn't the Joe Bidens that want to put you in jail or the Clintons with their crime bills. Do you not see this? Everybody knows the record. The Clintons called you super predators. Donald Trump is funding black colleges and eliminating the super predator status, and he's eliminated the draconian means by which black people were getting thrown in jail for trivial crimes. Which brings us to George Floyd. He was a scumbag. He put his gun to a pregnant woman's stomach in her home while his buddies robbed that house. I would have enjoyed killing George Floyd or anybody who wanted to get in my way to do it. And if you don't agree with me, ask yourself, what would you do if that pregnant woman was your wife, your mother, or your sister? And if you have a hard time unpacking that, F you. Don't come near me because you may be George Floyd too. If you get my drift. Now you want to go raise statues and venerate and deify dirtbag, antisocial, professional gangsters? I'm not on board. And I listen to Michael Jordan throw a hundred million dollars. Let me tell you about selfish Michael Jordan, who's a multi, multi billionaire. He's not parting with $100 million out of his pocket. And how do he make his blood money? Off the labor and sweat of little Chinese children slaves. Does that offend you black folks in America? Not at all. You'll kill each other for a pair of Air Jordans. And you won't have an ounce of empathy for those poor Chinese kids. Either will Steve Kerr or Popovich or the rest of the dirt balls that run the NBA like so many mafiosi because they're getting fat rich. And you poor hood boys, what do you got? What do you got? You got ESPN. I listened to Sharp today on Fox Sports with that idiot Skip something or other. Oh, you know what, Skip? You know what, Skip? I'll tell you what, Skip. I never thought Michael Jordan would step up like that, you know, all these years, he, never, he kept quiet all the time. You know something, Skip? He put up $100 million in my eyes. That changed everything I always said about Michael Jordan. Well, that's pretty good imitation, I think. He's a functional illiterate. Was he a good football player? No, he was a great football player. But if I went to ESPN and I told them, yeah, I want to get a job, could I get a job being a sport captain talking like that? What do you think they would say to me? What do you think? Let me be let me be blunt. The Jewish boys who run Disney, the Michael Eisners, and all the Jewish liberals who run ESPN, what do you think they would say to me if I came to an interview talking like Sharp? Oh, Chuck, you can't say that. Yeah, because it's true. Howard Cosell very adroitly warned about the coming jockocracy. We used to have professional sportscasters and commentators, bright guys. A lot of them were lawyers, guys like Chris Schenkel, Dick Schapp, Red Barber. 
Mel Allen, Marv Albert. Nobody cared if they were Jew, Gentile, black or white. They were smart people. That's not what we're getting today. And it's all socialism rammed down your throat. But they don't want socialism when it comes to their pay. Basketball players are the highest paid athletes in the world. And NFL, the kneeling football league, I'll never watch a pro football game again. And it doesn't matter whether I agree with this, the issue of the day. I don't want to hear politics. I don't want to hear it. In a stupid industry like I was in, flooring, if you ever had emails pontificating about politics, they'd have canned you. We've got crooks in the FBI heading up the biggest investigations in 20 years. I'm talking about Strzok and Page, and they're saying just about every prejudicial thing, and we're not supposed to believe that affected how they did their job. So how much urine do you need running off your head And how much Gene Kelly singing in the rain do you got to listen to before you wake up and realize you've been played? The black folks in America have never gotten off the plantation. You've become porch monkeys for the Democratic Party. Did you hear what I said? You're porch monkeys. That term was invented by black slaves. When the master would go to town, he'd leave his friendly little slave to sit on the porch to watch what went on, observe, and report. And the brothers in the field would say, Massa got his poach monkey out there. White people didn't make up that word. Y'all don't know what the words mean. The N-word, quote, nigger, unquote, is the way a southerner said negro. wasn't inherently pejorative. Southern people chop off words when they talk. They make short words long and long words short. So, would you like less or more? I'd like more. They turn a a, a one-syllable word into three syllables. Mower. How do you do that? That's that's how Southerners speak. So they weren't saying something pejorative when they said the N-word. It was the way a Southerner said nigra. Oh, by the way, don't call me a nigro. I'm black. What does nigro mean? Oh, that means black. What does a Jewish person call black people? Schwartz. What does Schwartz mean? Black. Most common Jewish names, Weiss, White, Schwartz, Black, right? Gross, Big, Klein, Small. So you all have invested in words, and you don't even know what the words mean or where they came from. How about the word cracker? Hey, tell me, Tyrone, what's a cracker? Hey, man, that's a redneck. Why they call him a cracker? Because they cracked the whip. That's not why they called him a cracker. Cracker comes from the Gaelic word kike which means a loud noise, like the snap of a whip, the report of a rifle, and a big talker, crackerjack. And the slaves learned quick who the crackers were. They were referring to the foreman, who went around barking orders. All right, now you, get that other nigger, get that cotton packed up on that nigger, I want that nigger out of here in five minutes. That was a cracker, big talker, that's all it meant. So you all don't know your history. You don't know words. You seize the moment, corpe diem, seize them. And scumbags like this, who has just enough education to bamboozle you, why you all embrace the plantation. You all have been on the southern plantation, aligned with these Dixiecrats and these, these, these racial liberals who say the most horrible things when you're not around that you'll never hear because you're not white. But I've heard it. I got some in my family. So you need to wake up. I have a book about a famous regiment who fought in the Civil War. They were from Orange County, New York, and the government in Middletown and in Cornwall and in Newburgh tried to pass laws that those white kids fighting to free blacks shouldn't have the right to vote for the next president as long as they weren't in Orange County. Could you imagine that? They were called copperheads. And if any of you black folks don't know, these were extreme radical Democrats who tended to side with the Southern Confederacy. And only at the very threat of dissolving the nation, 
which meant they would have lost their power, did they go along with Lincoln. But they hated Lincoln. They wanted to replace him with George McClellan, a general. They wanted to replace him with anybody who would have went along. And let me tell you, if they had elected a Democrat right after the Civil War, you'd have been put right back in slavery. Right back. Damn near put you in slavery, bringing you to the North, where they paid you below wages and your life, your, your life got better, but not anywhere near where it should have been and had Lincoln lived, would have been. So, you got to understand the truth. It's biblical. I would tell black folks in America, read your Bible, and you better find out what a Hamite is. Because that's what you all are. And you displayed it with the greatest of self-evidence by how many cities, how many anarchist things you performed, burning buildings, hitting cops with bricks. That's all rebellion. The looting and stealing is the least of it. But your disrespect for law and order is the definition of a Hamite. Go to the Old Testament. It's there. God said till the end of time would the descendants of Ham act this way. Disregard for authority. Chaos. You don't, you don't get married and raise your children. You breed like dogs and you move on and you, you create a generation of new kids that never knew authority. Because daddy was never home. Some people argue that's what mf -er has to do with. It's a Freudian thing. Are you my daddy? Hey, mother blanker. Very interesting. I read that 30 some odd years ago. So you want change? Well, you've been marching with your fists up in the air. I'm 64 my whole life. You don't change. You're incapable of change. You're genetically inclined never to change. I didn't do it. White people didn't do it. They give you free college money. What do you do? They give you 96% of your jobs comes from the government. Bus drivers, postal workers, right? Police, firemen. 4% comes from entertainment and sports and whatever else black people do. But do you know what the percentage of black entrepreneurship is? It's immeasurably small. So, you want to call me a racist? Go ahead. I'm giving you facts. Don't believe me? Look it up. But you won't. And even if someone hand-delivered you the facts on a silver platter, you'd turn your head away because you don't want to know the truth. Guess what? That's what the Bible said Hamites would be. So, this week, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. I don't want to negotiate with you people. I don't want to know you. Just like this creep. I don't want to know people like him. You're a liberal. Get out of my life. I'm not interested in compromising with you, meeting you anywhere, especially in the middle. I want you either exterminated or out of my country. But you won't leave. You won't go to Venezuela. You won't go to China. You won't go to any of the communist countries in the world. You want to pollute this country, a republic built on capitalism. It's an old saying, don't bitch transfer, but you won't. I hate this guy and I hate New York, so I left. That's what you do. My next move is probably out of this country. I'm going to go where I'm never going to be threatened as the next minority by a bunch of savages. I didn't make you savages. You choose to be savages. You whine. You're 13% of the population. You're 58% of the violent crimes. You're overpopulated in the jails. You're slugging percentages off the charts. That's by your behavior. Cops don't go looking for you. They go looking for crime. Where's the crime? Wherever you people are. You don't like that? Stop breaking the law, like George Floyd did. You know what George Floyd did? He met up perfectly with the shadow of his fate. Watch a plane crash. When the shadow meets the metal, it hits the ground. That's what happens to bad people. George Floyd was a bad man. Was that cop wrong to do what he did? Absolutely. But that's another whole demographic I'm not a big fan of either. 
those who would choose to give away freedom for security end up with neither. That's what the Founding Fathers knew. Now, you want to listen to this Svengali Cuomo, the Clintons, Bullhorn Obama, Bullhorn George Bush, BS artist James Comey, Free, Ray, Strzok, Potato Head Brennan, you're in deeper stuff than you know. There comes a point where a country like a person doesn't deserve to live. You, you become too stupid. You become too corrupted. You become too infirmed. So, I've realized this week, if America dies, maybe it's not so bad for me. I don't have kids. And I truly believe that my country died 20 years ago, maybe more. We're just starting to smell the stench. So go rabble, revel, excuse me, in your debauchery. And when this country finally breathes its last gasp, remember your time is nigh because the bell's going to toll for you and you're not going to have the right to protest or demonstrate. You're going to have the right to die and you will have brought it on yourselves.